Hello viewers, welcome to our program on immigration and you. I am your immigration attorney Michael Falwani and once again we have with us attorney David Nachman, my partner. Hi Michael. Today's program we want to start with giving you cutoff dates for the month of December 2012. And then we have some very important information to give it to you. So stay tuned, listen carefully. Here are the cutoff dates for the month of December 2012. The family first preference, which is for the unmarried sons and daughters of U.S. citizens, advances by four weeks to December 2005. Family 2A category, which is for the unmarried sons and daughters under the age of 21 of green card holders, advances by five weeks to August 22, 2010. The family 2B category, which are the unmarried sons and daughters over the age of 21 of the green card holders advances also by five weeks to November 15, 2004. The family third preference, which is for the married sons and daughters of U.S. citizens, advances only by one week to June 8, 2002. And the family fourth preference, which are the brothers and sisters of U.S. citizens, also advance one week to April 1, 2001. So what we can see here, the third and the fourth family preference category, there is a very slow movement. The employment preference categories, the first preference which are the priority workers is current for all the countries including India. The second preference, the advanced degree holders for the other countries, uh, most of the other countries other than India, advanced by four weeks to December 22nd, 2006. Uh, the okay. third preference. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the, 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 for India, is September 1, 2004, which is there is no movement. For right. other countries, it is current. Correct. Second preference. Yep. But I'm sure David will have make some comments on the, the problem with India. Why is is going to be... Continues it's to very be a problem. Very disappointing. Yeah. Okay. But let's yeah. give them the f information yeah, for the rest then of we'll, the categories. Then we'll move along. Yeah. yeah. The employment third preference, which is the professionals and skilled workers, for most of the countries except India, advances by four weeks to December 22nd, 2006. For India, it advances only one week to November 1st, 2002. The employment fourth preference, which are the special immigrants and include religious priests and religious workers, is current Arrange. for all the countries. And the investors, both for the million dollars and half a million dollar investment, are current for all the countries. Now. First of all, I want to tell you that I'm, I'm sure the David may have a comment or two quick on the cutoff dates. But the two important things that we are going to talk about today is a recent announcement by the, the U.S. Embassy in India in which they have liberalized uh, uh, by granting waiver, interview waiver, not waiver of biometrics. Everybody has to go for fingerprinting, but certain categories, uh, persons don't have to be interviewed, although it gives a little... Uh, I, I think uh, exception is that the council may on a case by case want to do it. Now I'll tell David to explain to you what is this new change. Basically there was an announcement before for some categories and recently they have expanded to some more categories. And I'm asking David, requesting him to give you the information on this new change as to what are the categories uh, that the people may not be interviewed. In other words, this is a little complex in the sense is, first of all, as of today when I call my Bombay office, our Bombay office, and they say they have not implemented yet. They contacted the, the place where they make appointments. They say they were still not implemented. So David and me both are going to approach all the consulate officers in India to confirm as to which consulates have implemented or none of them have implemented, but they will be implementing, that's sure. This is an announcement made by the embassy saying immediate effect, I, I believe it. Right. So we will contact them and give you the, maybe uh, as soon as we get the information, we come back and give you all that information. In the meantime, at least David, you can tell them what was the previous uh, uh, interview waiver program that they announced and what is the new expansion? Okay, um, 
so let me uh, do one at a time, Michael. I guess the first thing um, that we should probably let our viewers know, uh, which you just hinted at, which is a really good point, is to let our viewers know that we're going to be going to India, um, and we're going to be there from the end of January through the middle of February, at which time we're going to meet with the consular officers in the various cities which we've done in the past. At that time, we'll discuss what the we consular... almost every year. Yeah. Every year, yeah. And what we're going to and, and what we're going to do there is have an opportunity to discuss some of the changes, some of the nuances, and as we've discussed with you, uh, you, our viewers, on a regular basis, is to let you know that sometimes, and this is what Michael was saying, is that a policy is made by the diplomatic mission, and then, of course, it takes a while for that information to trickle down, because it has to get down to the officers who are actually implementing and making those discretionary decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. So that takes some time. See, the reason for that also is that announcement comes in right away, but they are not ready. You know, they have to make some changes. They might have already given some appointments to people to come for the interview, and they have to decide what is to be done with them. Uh, can we go back? And even those people can be exempted. And how they are going to, the officers have to be ready. That's right. Uh, and sometimes, let me tell you, sometimes the officers find it difficult to, they are used to grilling and asking questions, and all of a sudden, they get this new guideline. And, and I know this happened in the past when H1, H1 was subject to 214B. The council used to ask lots of questions and deny each one's left and right. When the change came in, it's a dual intent. For some initial period of time, some of them still did the interviews and denied 214B. And we said, why are you denying 214B? It's no more there. Okay, okay, okay. So That's right. you're, you made a good point on that, that how it trickles down, it takes time. Yeah, it takes time. And uh, we even know that from our visit to New Delhi uh, last year where we were talking to the consular officers, and sometimes the interpretations of certain regulations or all DACs that come to the consulate are interpreted one way by some consular officers the and then a different way by other consular officers. Correct, correct. So it just depends. And these are nuances which, yeah. of course, so David, we take away. So time you left now, please explain to them what, uh, what kind of applicants have the waiver, what was before, and what's well, the expansion? Right, Michael, and uh, actually it's important to point out that this was announced by the diplomatic mission several months ago. So the exemptions for the uh, waivers were uh, business uh, B1s in March and... 2012, the first part. And right. then the second part is two days ago only. Correct. March of 2012, the announcements were made that individuals could obtain a personal interview, personal a waiver of the personal interview for um, B1s, B2s, dependents, um, H4s, L2s, and J2s, transit visas and crew members, which are the C1D visas, also children applying before their seventh birthday who are traveling in any visa class, and applicants applying on or after their 80th birthday traveling on um, uh, traveling in any visa class. So those were the, that was the original announcement that was made back in March. Then what came down was actually an announcement that was made uh, by the diplomatic mission in New Delhi uh, on Last November week, yeah. yeah November 19th. And um, what they did is they expanded that uh, interview waiver program to children applying before their 14th birthday traveling on any visa class, students returning to attend the same school or same program, uh, temporary workers on H-1B visas, and also temporary workers on L-1s, uh, L-1As, and L-1Bs. Yeah, I must so add, that, was the, add that this yeah. is not for the first time applicants. This, right. is, this, this is only renewing. That's Somebody right. already it's got a student visa, visitor visa, H1 stamp on the passport. Exactly. In other and words, that the case has already been vetted, and now what they're doing is going back and seeing you know, re-stamping. Re-stamping, exactly. renewing it, whatever people call but, it. Right. But right now, what is happening? You know, you know what's happening. If one student is here, right, mm -hmm. and he has been going to college, and he went to have to meet the family for some reason, he applies, his, his stamp has expired. He's still a valid F1 status. His stamp has expired. He goes, he thinks, so oh, I'll go and give him a new stamp. And they grill him, and how many times will they deny that? h ones you know, second time they are going, and they have big 221G, and a big deal goes exactly. up. Exactly. So remember, this is not for the new applicants. This is only people who already have the same type of visa, exactly. same classification, and exactly. that has... Uh, I think there was a period of time it hasn't expired uh, more than a certain period ago. So that, if we can more details on that. However, this there's no waiver of the biometrics. 
Every applicant has to has do to the biometric fingerprinting, photo has right. to be done by everyone. That's Only right. the personal interview, which is the most important thing is personal interview. Biometrics, just go in, give your fingerprints and your photo. There are no questions about that. Right. And Second interview, the personal interview is where the people are worried, where the problem comes. And hopefully, once it is implemented and the same H1 person, same employer, same school, for example, all that has to be same. And they are just renewing it easy. Because the question is logically, they interviewed him for the first time, right? Mm -hmm. Visitor visa, student visa, interviewed him first time, right? Right. And he has been coming back and forth. Right. The 214B denial, why should it be when he's coming for a renewal? What's new? Exactly. But they have, they have that option also. It's not mandatory that they cannot. Even if they see a reason, they have to have a good reason for that. Yeah, and I think it's important, Michael, to point out to our uh, viewers that the reason why they're doing this is because they're trying to streamline the process and to take the pressure off the off the consulate because there's a tremendous number of applications that are being made at the U.S. consulates in India for these various types of visas and what they're trying to do is to make their lives a little easier. The problem that you run into, unfortunately, is that if um, if individuals show up for these in, uh, for for the the interviews, uh, what's going to end up happening is that they may they may call people in yeah. because they may say, for example, that there's a question about um, the employer or there might be something else that's coming up. There there may be some kind of a change circumstance which uh, results in their uh, inability to utilize this procedure, and that might be one of the reasons why it's taking so long for implementation to actually occur. Also. This is not just for the benefit of the, the people or the applicants or our clients. Look at the Department of State. In 2011, they, in India, they processed 700,000 non-immigrant visas. Which is a tremendous number. Tremendous. Yeah. And the number keeps on increasing. That's right. And it's very difficult for them to manage. Well, it's putting a lot of pressure on the it's officers. And the money, yeah. money. That's you know, right. yeah. the way the budgeting is going to happen, the more and more demand comes for the officers. They say, oh, work has increased now from 700,000 to a million now, for example. Uh, we need more officers, four more officers. We need more, more facilities. So basically, this, this will reduce the time that's taken in the re-interviews. And that is one of the important things for the Department of State, for the government, for the budget. And to be easy, I mean, everybody's happy. I think it's a win-win situation. It's good right. for the Department of State. It's good for the council officers. They don't have to hassle and deal with every time all these type of cases. And good for our visa applicants yeah. also. And I think that one of the things that we have to point out, Michael, again, is that it's good and it's a win-win as long as they follow their own protocols. Because if they're not actually implementing this protocol, then it's another story altogether. And so that's, yeah, I think, going to be... I mean, initially, you know, there's a teething problem, always a little bit of teething problem, or there may be the number of interviews, they still, in their discretion, they can do, will be, maybe there's some good, better percentage than in the later years to come. As they Absolutely. go, you get used to this. As they go along, they'll get used to the new policy. And, and we have seen this. In my life, I've seen for 40 years, changes happening, changes, this thing coming on, up and down and going back and forth. Right. All, all that does take place and does take time. But does, last, take, last, does take time. Does the, <laughs> last word I'm making, that, that doesn't mean that David Nachman and Michael Falwani saying no interviews, that you don't worry about that. There are still type of cases where there may be more chances of the council in the discretion is still in this uh, exactly. Back, come in and exactly. So you should be yeah. very careful and you have any complex issues, any problems, it's a good idea to consult with uh, your attorney, immigration attorney, uh, thoroughly explain him, I'm going to India for stamping, these are my issues, these are my problems, do you think it's okay, it's not okay? I think it's, it's the best suggestion that we can give to our viewers. Exactly, and I think that our viewers need to temper the fact that this memorandum is out there with the fact that it is going to take time for this information to trickle down to the lower levels, to the officers who are actually making those determinations. And in our next program, we'll give you more important information on the STEM bill that has been introduced in the Congress. Make sure to watch us uh, next week again for that and we'll provide you with more detailed information on that. Thank you very much, David, for being with us, and thank all of you for watching the program, and goodbye.